هجي في التمرين الاول الفيزيكا نخدم له اش زيرو شو راه صرا صرا بلا اش زيرو ولا بلا اش زيرو الفرق اللي بيناتهم هو بلا اش زيرو راه خاصك تحسب الديفرونس بيناتهم في الاخر هجي ست الورق اللي طونو في الاداره While I was reading the book, Identity from Francis Fukuyama, I was wondering what identity for people in North Africa and Middle East. But before talking about that, let's go back in history. Through history, every country trying to find its own identity. But due to the complexity of said identities, some of them didn't succeed. One of those countries is Turkey. Before 1929, Turkey was a traditional empire that included Turks, Kurds, Arab, Greeks, and a lot of other ethnics and struggled to keep all these ethnics under one rule since there was no real belonging from this ethnic to Istanbul. After a long history of wars, Turkey succeeded to unify the Anadolu by modernizing and Turkification the Turkish language by adapting it to the academic use. It didn't really succeed to establish this situation because it did impose a group language over the others but it achieved some kind of success. Other example is French that struggle to create a common sense of belonging in the people living in this location and struggle with Latin that keep knowledge far from people's hands. Since the creation of modern states in North Africa and Middle East, one big common issue has been the national identity crisis. Those countries has been unable to define and maintain a national identity. Due to diversity in those countries, they are a mix of many ethnics, religious, cultural, and linguistic minorities. An Arabism was the answer of some leaders such as Abdel Nasser in Egypt, Irbath Rai in Syria and Iraq, Islamism in Gulf, Judaism in Israel, and Sain in the Middle in some countries such as Morocco and Tunisia. As a result, we are living in 2020 and almost all those regimes have been changed but still struggling with the determination of our own identities. It may seem not important, yet it is the key for the stability in the manner. A good question, how? In order not to fail in the complexity of a specific country, they imagine a virtual country that have the common characteristic of the Minas nations. Let's call it Minaland. In Minaland, we usually have six factions which are nationalist, pan arabist Westernization pro, Islamist, native Minalanders such as Amazian, large faction of non-Arabs such as Kurds and sectarists. Among all of them, there is secularists and theocrats. Governing Minaland is not easy at all. Bringing democracy to it would not be a good idea. Because political party won't live in harmony, they will only fight for shaping the country's identity according to their own belief, and not for the benefits of the nation. Either it will be the majority imposing their own ideology on a minority which would create a tyranny and a visible feeling for the minority's leaders and foreign powers that could lead to civil war and betrayers, or it would raise the minority to the power which would oppress the majority till the fall of the regime and encourage the majority to take revenge on the minority. So the idea of dictatorship seems more suitable now. But wait a second, it will not be a great idea neither. Actually it had been already tried but it didn't succeed. And we have all seen dictatorships fall one after the other because they failed to unify the hard nation's demography under one identity. Also, they failed to establish strong institutions that could guarantee the continuation of the country. And why again? Because they failed to make people feel that they are Minalanders and not a part of a specific faction. For example, in the Syrian civil war, those feelings were heavily invested from the faction leaders and created real militias around this national diversity. The FSA of the Sunni Islamists, the RB and Syrian army of Alawites, secularists and pan-Arabists, is there out of West Pros and Kurdish. Isn't it now the time to think outside the box? The key of this problem is to find a real and fine identity, something that could all the people agree on. It could be a race, a language, a religion, a set of values that the country was established on. As Minaland is rich with races, religious, and unagreed diverse values, it would be left with one factor, language. Arabic, English or even French are a foreign language in Minaland and the preference of Arabic or French over local languages was a result of policies aiming to unify people under one governance or to conserve a certain elite's power but it did ignore all other minorities who in fact 
are not a minority. Statistics were heavily manipulated so the Arabization of Minaland could seem legitimate. And the worst is that Minaland the dialect was really undermined. For example, USA, France, Germany and a lot of other countries use their local language in their professional, academic and literature fields. In the other hand, in Minaland, IT, politics, philosophy, literature and easily accessible to most Minalanders because simply they use other language than real use language. So Minaland must have one local language inspired from the other local languages that could play the role of the unifier, then Minandi dialect should be recognized and transformed into an official language by making it more compatible with academic and business purposes, so that Minalander could enjoy richer internet content and knowledge won't be exclusive for French, Arabic, English speakers, and philosophical literature and academic product would be closer to people, which would lead to a whole social revolution. But why not use in Arabic? Let's take a look back in history. France, one of the most powerful literature civilization, has come to a point that Latin should not be used anymore in science and philosophy because it monopolized the knowledge in favor of the elites and the church, and so on. Choosing Arabic would firstly ignore all the ethnic groups, secondly would monopolize the knowledge, thirdly would keep the linguistic decisions come from another capital than the Menelan's capital. And to have such a unified language, Menelandi should be in the middle of the dialect language in the country by including the vocabulary of Menelandi, Arabic and the other minorities language in the new language. And also it will be an opportunity to come with a language more non sexist more tolerant to the other, more adapted to the development. Because all the languages that we speak now are influenced by what what people think years ago and at the same time language influenced the way people think so it's better to make a language with modernized syntax vocabulary so it will enlighten the way people think though reaction won't be weak some of them will reject the idea by saying the religious argument but there is no religion that imposes on people to speak a specific language even though in Islam, Arabic is a sacred language. But the majority of Muslims don't speak Arabic, so the only real argument here is either sticking to tradition or the fear of new ideas. And yes, it isn't easy at all to persuade people to adapt to a new language, especially if they are uneducated. Because the more a person is educated about subject, the less he becomes extreme. So the adaptation of the new language should be slowly done, which means firstly by making school more accessible for all. Secondly, by adapting more open and tolerant social programs in high school. And finally, by making it an attractive choice in universities, pushing the private sectors to start adapting the new language. And that will be by encouraging them by lowering taxes when using it, for example, and translating important academic sources in the new language so we can use it in academic research and business, and that individuals could benefit from it. And then we may think to impose it on all the people, but with keeping English as the only foreign language in the country so we can guarantee the openness to the world and heavily advertise advertising it by making books, films, social media, influencing sources, TV shows in the new language. And also we have to create a set of liberal and unifying values including the new language. And I know you would ask, is a unified language enough to shape Menelan's identity? The answer is no, however, the new language would create a common environment for all, would facilitate passing the knowledge to the public, and start the biggest national project that would bring all the faction to the middle by well educating their children, reconsidering radical ideas in their ideology, and agreeing on one red line, which is the unity of the nation.